saw one of these stupid Overwatch tier lists in my, in my uh, feed, and it didn't have skill ceiling and skill floor. In fact, very few of them do. The problem with not having a skill ceiling and skill floor is like saying soccer is a very easy game to pick up because all you have to do is kick the ball or fo football, you know, European football. Because technically, soccer is an extremely easy sport to pick up. You just kick the ball and you kick it in the net. The whole game is simple. It's not a particularly difficult mechanical thing to do. Even somebody with a little bit of training can kick relatively accurately with the ball. But obviously, the game has a lot of complexity from that into the pro level. Like a serious complexity, right? Whereas you look at a sport like golf... There is also a lot of complexity and finesse, but to pick it up is almost is like significantly harder than something like soccer. But at the top level, it's not necessarily harder to play. It's just different. So what happens is I could say soccer is significantly easier than golf on a tier list, and I'd be right, and I'd be wrong at the same time. Do you see what I'm saying, chat? So when people put like, you know, oh, uh, I don't know, uh, let's say ball is really easy to play Le legitimately like the only tank that's meta it's so easy legit just afk kills in. it's like the easiest thing in the world like the mechanics are not even that important like you're not wrong but it's all extremely like deceiving to say that or like saying that um what's another hero that we did oh you know widow maker is easy it's just aim like it's just very deceptive like there's there's multiple it's like like how good is how easy it is to get decent at the hero and how easy it is to be really good at the hero like how much ceiling there is thank you for the 10 bits um so because of you i mean uh, yeah you get a little credit here because I, I wasn't going to do it until you, you made me do it so here we go skill floor let's actually start with the skill floor and let's let's compare this to the skill ceiling i'm not promoing my own twitter i just want to discuss this because i wanted to discuss this on the stream all right so the skill floor now i treat this as what why did i pull up being Worcester Polytechnic Institute. I was typing epic and I actually hit the W key. Thank you, Bing. Go back to your cave and never come out again. Um, no! Okay, so this is where we differentiate. Okay, can you guys see was my head in the way? My head's in the way. Where my head's in the way? My head's in the way. Uh, there, let's do this. Little, 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 little mini spot. Okay, all right, this is, this is where we, we have, you know, <clears throat> Actually, let's let's do this. Let's do this right here, right here. Is this good? Yes, perfect. Okay. Now, um, this is what we were referring to. Extremely hard to pick up. Now, let's start with the bottom. This is skill floor. Also, you can coincide this with value floor. Hydrate, posture check. Holy cow, you guys! I'm gonna be like, we should have one for like push-ups or jumping jacks or something. Or like open heart surgery. Like 200 bits for open heart surgery. I'll be the healthiest person in the world. All right, <clears throat> all right, here we go. This is in terms of how easy it is to get to a base level of competency. In other words, to find decent value out of the hero, okay? Skill floor, in other words, how difficult it is to reach a base competency of the hero. Again, you can argue this is very similar to value floor. In other words, well, how do you judge its base competency? Because maximum competency is like pro level, top tier pro level, it's pretty pretty standard, right? Um, but I'm trying to be objective about like, okay, we, we give you a certain number of mistakes for, before we call you incompetent, right? Unless you're being coached by me, and then you're just incompetent all the time. Posture check, thank you. Um, so, easy mercy. Like, mercy, vast majority of your heroes, basic movement skills, holding left click on people that need healing, and occasionally damage boosting during ultimates. And that's what I call base competency. The most difficult part of mercy is learning super jump um, and being able to do a super jump as necessary. That's literally the only difficult part about her. Um, at least at a base level of competency. So I find Mercy to be extremely easy at a low level. I actually consider Soldier to be the also the easiest aim reliant hero. Um, the way his gun operates the with the fall off, the, the spread was removed. Now he does have the kickback you have to deal with, but um, heal station, helix rocket, those are not difficult cooldowns to use. And the big thing here is you'll notice a lot of the heroes in the moderate to easy tier also have very easy ultimates to use. Soldier's Visor is like one of the most oppressive ultimates in lower ranks because nobody, uh, the positioning's terrible, nobody knows what to do with it, they can't click his head in return. And it's one of the worst ultimates in the higher tier, but in lower tiers, it's like absolutely oppressive. So that's a big thing that makes Soldier probably the easiest aim reliant hero. Very self sufficient, very simple, nothing to him. Um, Junkrat, very spam hero. Obviously, there is a little tricks to him, but again, very, very easy ultimate, very, very spam reliant. Moira is one of the worst design heroes in the game, barring none. There is some complexity to her, um, but a lot of it is just 
it, like like not only does she have like her aim is like more skill reliant which is good but she has almost no utility whatsoever it is literally just max healing and farm your ultimate and you know pressure like squishies with your right click that's literally it resource management and she has one of the easiest ultimates and easiest cooldowns in the game to use coalescence is one of the easiest ultimates to use in the game as is orb in terms of cooldown usage now <clears throat> you guys know that i made a big video on how to use orb pro pro uh, properly like 12 minutes heal versus damage orb and i talk a lot about some complexities but the irony is the fact that i could even make a video about a cooldown tells you the, how easy it is to use like can you imagine if i tried to make a video about matrix like where would i even start or 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 like um like it's not just a cooldown it's a cooldown that's such a fundamental part of her kit for example like bubble or shield or uh you know even even ball slam or like the or grapple like you can't or wall exactly like you can make it about moira orb like i can do 12 minutes and tell you basically everything that there is to know about moira orb and you can't do that with many with cooldowns it's one of the simplest cooldowns to use in the game and significantly it's one of the simplest support cooldowns in the game because if you compare it to something like guardian angel sleep dart uh, armor pack, uh, Zenyatta, uh, Discord and Harmony, a lot more complexity behind those orbs. And again, those or, uh, orb is like legitimately a good 40% of Moira's kit in terms of what she actually brings to the table. Okay. So very simple here, poorly designed, poor ultimate, etc. Reinhardt is one of the heroes that actually climbs up significantly, uh, once you get it to the max level. Um, but in a lot of lower tiers, he is just kind of a shield bot. You can press W with Reinhardt. You swing when you have HP. Otherwise, you just press W. Reinhardt's very, very common and popular tank in lower ranks because it's pretty easy to see what he does. He protects his team. He's got the biggest, highest HP shield in the game, and he just walks forward holding a shield. Torb is a tricky one. Um, obviously, he is a relatively... He does have a tricky projectile to deal with, but because he is a spam hero similar to Junkrat, like just spam choke, spam choke, spam choke, and obviously the big thing with Torb is his ultimate is relatively easy to use, but also his turret is a lot of the value, uh, and it is automated. So getting a competent turret placement, spamming on choke are not difficult things to do. Those are all in Torb. If you guys disagree, let me know. Um, and by the way, when I say easy, obviously there's like, you know, it, it, like it, it, Mercy is not like a one way trick trick to plat, you know what I'm saying? But easier than other heroes. Um, picking up Reaper, uh, again, there's not a lot of complexities here. If you, if, you're, if you know how to flank occasionally and you can take shots at the enemy front line and you know how to press Q, then you will do fine. Uh, Lucio is one of the heroes that kind of just you exist and you get value. Obviously, speed boost is very, very complex and his mechanics are very high, but at the base level, very easy. Same thing with Hog, not a lot to him. Uh, you know, you land a hook, you get a kill. That's pretty much it. Diva is a, a tricky one. I wasn't sure where to put Diva. Um, and she's a very popular hero in lower ranks just because she has a vast, big, nasty hitbox. Um, and we saw, like, with uh, if you guys saw my Diva VOD review on Hollywood, a lot of Divas tend to kind of play it incorrectly. But it, it's 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 not too hard to not die as Diva. You can just kind of survive, as well as Diva Bomb being one of the ultimates. It gets a lot more value and at a lower rank than it does at higher ranks. Um, <clears throat> Diva should be hard. You can make a good argument for it. Yeah, Farah. Uh, Farah was always split on because Farah is tricky, but also has a history of being really oppressive in lower ranks, especially on console. So I was I was torn about Farah. Ball is pretty moderate. Ball is not very hard to pick up uh, in terms of like what you're supposed to be doing. Rolling through the enemy team, pathing, uh, not super mechanically reliant. Uh, you've just to master a couple of basics and you should be okay. Bastion, again, very, very basic. Um, uh, the only thing with Bastion that makes it a little bit more complex is like obviously in this meta with how shields are, Bastion as a whole is a little trickier to play because you can't just sit on pirate ship. Like that's not how you can't play Bastion like that all the time. Um, May. Pretty easy, you know, you lay in a half decent wall, press mouse one, one of her ultimates, generally, again, more valuable in lower ranks than it is in higher ranks. Echo ultimate, now, I had a good response to this, you guys can see, could Echo be up to one tier? So this is why I put Echo in moderate, probably the most hot take out of this one here. It's because she is the easiest flanker in the game to get value out of her cooldowns. Sombra, Genji, Doomfist, Tracer, she's the easiest flanker and she's arguably the easiest spam hero as well to get value out of her cooldowns. She, like, we talk a lot about Echo flight control and using cover and angles and things like that, but Echo is one of those heroes that really could just press mouse one and her right click occasionally and then beam whenever and, and do very well. Yeah, Echo is a very easy hero to just kind of exist and you do fine. Um, 
Her ultimate's a little bit trickier than some of the other ones, but uh, it's you know it's obviously easier than Pulse Bomb. It's easier than Blade in a lot of ways. Uh, it's inconsistent when compared to EMP, uh, but it's it just you just exist and you do a lot as Echo. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, all right. Um, challenging the pickup is and again, well I don't know. Imagine, I'm not talking about masters though. Like I'm talking about a base competency, which for me is defined as gold to plat, right? That's where we have like a general competency of the game, right? Uh, and even then that my definition is broad, right? I don't trust gold plats to decide what they think is best, right? So it's like ironic that the gold plats where I think this, this, this tier would be the most useful or silver to plat is also the tier where I would not trust them to make the decisions in terms of picking these heroes, right? Um, okay, <clears throat> challenging to pick up Symmetra. Again, she plummets uh, at ceiling, but she is awkward and weird. And understanding like what her role is with TP, how to use your turrets properly, that's another thing that a lot of people misuse. Primary fire versus secondary fire, it's very, very tricky uh, in lower ranks to kind of understand like what her niche is. And another thing that people consistently mess up is her ultimate, consistently misused ultimate. Um, Genji, pretty straightforward. Um, he's simultaneously like uncounterable and yet easy to counter. Um, if you're if you if you face off against somebody who's good, you're almost impossible. Like it's just so easy to kill you. But like how many times have you guys played up against a Genji Blade and you guys have a million ways of countering it and everybody just kind of stands there and panics and he just kills everybody. Um, Blade is a very 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 strong ultimate. He's a very top heavy hero. Um, not to mention, so I wouldn't say he's really really hard, like really easy, but he is he's not as hard as some of the uh, heroes like Doomfist that are more all in. Brig tricky. Uh, Rally is just busted, which prevents her from being higher up on this list. Not to mention the fact that, um, you know, Inspire is also very strong. I'm going to try and crank this through a little bit faster. Hanzo, aim reliant, but also finds benefit from not hitting shots, just from existing. Shooting angles, his ultimate's okay. You'll notice that some of these ultimates are generally getting a little bit trickier and trickier to use. Uh, McCree, aim reliant, uh, but basic. Um, strong cooldowns, but a lot of people in lower ranks struggle to get value out of the cooldowns. Uh, Strong HP, but again, people in lower ranks tend to struggle getting value out of Fortify and Halt properly. Uh, same thing with Sigma. Since the shield nerfs, these guys are just a lot less oppressive. Uh, Zarya, obviously very strong ultimate, but it's, players in lower ranks really struggle to benefit from getting the uh, value out of their bubbles and getting charge. Um, Ash, not a very complicated hero in terms of like cooldown usage and positioning, but is very, like, very aim reliant. Same thing with Zen. Uh, you know, Zen gets a lot of value just by existing, right? So you can die very easily. He's very squishy, but he can just get value by existing, whereas Ana has to actually hit her shots. And Zen, Zen doesn't have it. Zen can just mash, mouse one in the general enemy's direction and still probably do better than a lot of Ana's. Um, difficult to pick up. This one's pretty self-explanatory. All these are difficult heroes where if you mess up your cooldowns, you're probably dead. Uh, and obviously your team contribution. It's not just about like your feeding because an Ana, it's hard for an Ana to feed. Uh, but it's very easy for an Ana to do nothing, right? To get, like, how many times have you played in silver or gold and had the enemy Ana get a massive nade or get a huge sleep dart, right? Or get a clutch nano. It doesn't happen very often. Um, generally, you have teams playing Moira or Mercy, just AFKing, slowly building up their ultimate and just kind of living like they're that. But the actual value of Ana is, is through her ability to damage people and for her ability to, like, get value out of her cooldowns. And a lot of lower rank Anas really struggle. The same thing with Sombra. A lot of teams don't really pay attention to timing. A lot of summers don't pay attention to timing. You're talking about hack, which is one of the top three strongest cooldowns in the game, um, arguably, but uh, obviously not something that it's followed up on a lot in lower ranks. Not because of communication, just because summers are generally clueless in lower ranks, not to mention teammates. Doomfist, all in. Um, very, very difficult to pick up. Very punishing. You screw up, you just die. Same thing with Monkey. These guys like are very, very difficult cooldown usage, very difficult to understand like what their role is, a lot, uh, very difficult to position, and then obviously very punishing, punishing, especially with 175 HP Widowmaker, you die instantly if you mess up, 150 HP here, Tracer, you die instantly, lots of stuff like that. Okay, next one. Now this is the really big one, okay? So we transition, I'm actually gonna leave this one up here. Um, ah, whatever, I'm just gonna leave it here. But this is where in terms of mastering the hero within a reasonable standpoint of like okay this guy is really 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 good how difficult is it okay moira is just absurd moira comes down to resource management and a couple of cooldown management things but her mechanical play is like next to zero there are fade jumps which you can do but they aren't particularly important and it's the only mechanical part of her kit because remember i'm not saying moira doesn't require some form of mechanics of course she does 
But does she require as much mechanics as Mercy? No. Does she require as much mechanics as Junkrat? No. Does she require as much mechanics as Solar or Soldier or Roadhog? No, she doesn't. Nor does she require as much, and, and arguably she requires even less cooldown management. Um, she requires more cooldown management uh, than Soldier, but not uh, not more than like uh, even a Junkrat to an extent, right? It's, it's close. Um, so Moira is really easy. Bastion um, was tricky for me. Um, I think Bastion in the current meta is hard to get value out of, but the hero itself doesn't have a lot to it. Uh, in other words, Bastion is hard to play right now because <laughs> he's just terrible. He's just awful. But that doesn't make him, oh, he's very hard to play. No, he's just, he's just, he's just, there's nothing about his get. Like if, if you buffed Bastion's damage by like 20 damage per shot, right? And now all of a sudden he's meta again. Nothing changes about how you play Bastion. He's still the same thing where you can you can turret when you have shield or you can go flank and do silly things here and there. That's it. There's nothing changed about Bastion. The only remotely difficult thing about Bastion is his ultimate. Everything else is pretty straightforward and knowing when and how to flank. That's, that's basically it. Um, it's a very straightforward hero. <clears throat> um, Symmetra, same kind of thing. Very straightforward. The primary fire and secondary fire is tricky, but once you get the hang of it, there isn't any huge life hack right secondary fire is good for long range spam secondary fire is good for 1v1s against like flankers where uh you know like tracers for example you often want to be using your secondary fire um but against like shields bigger hp targets uh mid-range you use your beam you charge your beam you kill the enemy team turrets not difficult to use you try and set them up ahead of time uh, or you tp bomb that's basically all you can do turret uh tp plays can be a little complicated but that's more something that you can only do as a team and ranked this doesn't really apply uh and her ultimate is a little tricky to get understand and then once you understand it there's no question you split the battlefield that's it and you do it over and over and over again um reaper this one might be a little bit of a hot take i just don't think there's anything to reaper and i and i've coached a reaper meta um you you, you can tp backline to pressure, support, and force support cooldowns, or you can shoot the front line to get kills and put pressure. Your ultimate is really easy to use. Um, he's not a very strong hero right now, but there is a very, 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 very little complexity with it, Reaper. Um, he really is has very low utility. He's just a tank buster, and that's it. Um, <sighs> Hog, again, I know some people like might argue that, oh, he's like actually really tricky. His hook, he, like he's all mechanics. He's like really, really just all mechanics. He's all mechanics and a little bit of positioning. Like you flank and you angle and things like that, but his cooldown usage is like remarkably easy to use. You hook people, that's it. You look for hook opportunities. So you have to kind of have the game sense of knowing when to hook and how to position, but that's it. Very little cooldown management, but a little tricky with mechanics. Mercy, mechanics are very easy. Uh, a little trickier than Moira though. Game sense, cooldown usage, positioning, uh, and her old are a little trickier as well um so there's a little bit more skill selling there junkrat um <clears throat> I, I was torn with junkrat because i was like technically a really like you could be put like hundreds of hours into junkrat and get really accurate with his grenades um but you could say the same about pretty much every hero and with junkrat unlike other heroes there's a limit of what you can actually project like because it's such a slow projectile even the world's best junkrat can only hope and pray, right? He can only increase his chances of hitting the shot by a couple percentage. So um, that and the fact that his ult uh, and his cooldown usage is just a relatively passive. He shoots in one direction, he grenades in one direction, he throws his trap on the flank. Uh, and that's pretty much it for him. Torp, aim dependent, uh, a little more aim dependent at the higher ranks. Obviously the aim matters a lot more, but ultimately he's still gimped by his cooldown usage. His turret uh, and his overload are very easy cooldowns to understand how to use and his ultimate's not particularly difficult either. Um, <clears throat> Soldier, same thing. Very, very, very vanilla blase ultimate. Very, very, very vanilla blase cooldown usage. Um, the only thing that comes down to soldier is probably positioning. Uh, that's a little tricky with how you position. So a uh, soldier might be in the high end of moderate, um, but obviously he's he's not a particularly difficult hero to understand how to use his cooldowns. Um, challenging the master. I mean, Arisa is not even close. Arisa is very definitely, definitely challenging the master. Um, she's been a very strong hero for a while, but Things like Halt, Fortify, and even the way her gun functions are very difficult to use. Her ultimate's pretty easy, but shield management, a lot of those things, you could argue that she's in the high end, actually, of this category. Zarya, same thing, very mechanical, cooldown based. Um, you're gonna notice something here that like across the board, cooldowns usage and mechanics becomes more important the, more, the further up you go. Cooldown usage, very, very, very important. Um, aims, somewhat important, definitely helps. Uh, McCree, basically just an aim reliant hero. Cooldown usage is very basic, but because he is such a cooldown reliant hero and, uh, excuse me, such an aim reliant hero and because his positioning matters more uh, than some of the DPS, uh, I bring him up. Obviously, extremely powerful cooldown with wall. 
has a pretty decent skill ceiling. Uh, her aim, her gun as well, has some difficulty with it as well. The right clicks are really, really important. Um, <clears throat> Reinhardt, again, probably higher end. It's, no, it's not a coincidence that a lot of the tanks and supports generally tend to be higher up on the list. Um, now, that's not saying DPS aren't hard to play. There are a lot of DPS up here, but in general, it seems to be more it's, you're more likely to see DPS that are easy to play than you are to see the same tanks of support. So, for example, we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, whereas you go 1, 2, and then only one tank, right? And even if you disproport, if, even if you're proportionate, like, okay, there's more DPS in the game, so of course there's more, this is disproportionate the number of DPS in the game. I, um, you know, draw what conclusions you will from it, but I think in general supports and tanks are have high are harder to play at a base uh, at, at, a, at a very very high level. Um, DPS there's a lot less flexibility with what you can do. Um, Ryan, I think it maybe again also in the higher end along with Arissa uh, with the mechanics with the cooldown usage positioning. Um, his cooldowns are actually remarkably hard to use. Like pin, uh, shield management, uh, even fire strike, all all very tricky. Um, Briggs, same kind of category, very difficult to use in terms of cooldown usage, very, very awkward, um, very unintuitive playstyle, I'll go as far to say. Um, they've nerfed her HP and her Inspire so much that she no longer plays like a Brawl, even though she has a Flail and a Shield Bash. She, she, she has a completely different hybrid. Um, <clears throat> game sense means like knowing what's going on in the fight, like what should be the right thing to do here. Um, and then if so, that's like, it, it, like the level of intelligence required about the game of Overwatch for you to actually function. Um, for example, you don't really need to know a lot of what's going on when you're playing Roadhog or Moira. It's pretty simple. Um, Echo, again, this is going to be a little bit of a hot take. I don't think she's a particularly and crazy hard DPS to play. I think she's comparative to a lot of things. Very, very mechanic reliant, very, very basic positioning. Cooldown management as of right now just isn't really a thing with Echo. Um, like shift, right click, E, all have such low cooldowns and you just basically spam them off of cooldown. That's essentially the thing. Maybe you can argue that shift, but even then not particularly good. Her ultimate is a little bit trickier as you get higher rank, um, but her cooldown management is just not a thing when you compare it to most of the other DPS. Um, but she is obviously like mechanics are a big thing with her. So mechanics are big, but her cooldowns are very easy. Ash. Cooldowns aren't particularly important. Dynamite is important, but it's not. There's not a lot of really hard cooldowns to use in terms of understanding. Nor is her positioning particularly like crazy hard. Um, and she, but she is very aim reliant, so obviously keeps that on the list. Sombra, I was torn with Sombra. So the reason why Sombra isn't higher here is because there's not the play style. Because here, here's the thing with Sombra. Sombra is a very difficult hero to master in terms of game sense and knowing who to hack, when to go on, what you should be doing. The reason that she's not higher up is because mechanics is just so is just not very very high it's not as high of an importance for her not to mention that in a lot of metas um her role almost simplifies so what i'm saying is you guys remember how we saw the uh show match the asian show match the dynasty versus dragons there's a lot of really good Sombra play here, but as as Sombra metas like evolve and people play them more and more, the meta gets simpler and simpler. And it's generally just you're off angle Sombra, you pocket, you farm EMP, and you just look for hacks. So her role actually sometimes can simplify. Her role is really hard when you're playing non-mirror compositions. That's when it gets weird, and that's when you have to make judgment calls. Um, Hanzo, I did not put him on Widow's level because his like he doesn't have to always hit headshots to do stuff his body his uh dps output is pretty high storm bow is really strong and really easy to use sonic bow is also very strong and is also very easy to use there are some variety um yes arissa is really hard at ryan okay it's okay stop saying is it as hard as ryan the question is skill ceiling i'm not saying is hard is hard to master to master 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 if you said it's hard to master Yes, I would argue that they're about the same. Now, nobody really knows a true answer here. Maybe Arissa takes 150 fewer hours than Ryan to master, and Ryan takes like 2,000, and Arissa takes two, like on 1850. My my opinion comes from pro coaching pro players, understanding the game, understanding this, like been being involved in like this whole like this whole process for years of training players to do this. So, I don't want to talk about is it as hard? No, no, no. Is it as hard to master? Then yes, is it is Arissa as hard as Ryan to get base level out of? I'd actually say she's harder to get in this current meta than Ryan to get base to to understand the basics out of. Um, but yeah, anyway.
in previous metas that's not been the case but anyway but hanzo can get a lot of value just by existing on angles his sonic bow is very easy to use his storm bow is very easy to use obviously mechanics matter but uh he's, he's more of a forgiving kit and even if you were insanely good at hanzo um you would get rewarded for that mechanical insanity less than you would for other heroes right so there's there's only so and again projectile heroes uh, a lot of the time are generally slightly or tend to have slightly lower skill ceilings especially if those projectile heroes don't have a lot of utility for example torb junkrat uh you look at symmetra you look at hanzo here right or even may to an extent and echo like there's a limit to even if your mechanics are insane you can't hit every shot it's just not going to be the case so um there are circumstances where you want to see your projectile hero get utility out but there's a lot of projectile heroes that don't have great utility or don't have other ways of setting up and by utility i don't mean like debuffs or buffs i mean like ways of uh like creativity with their playstyles. like when you play may you play may because they're wall, right when you play hanzo you play hanzo because he can hit shots and sonic bow so there's not a lot of utility here um difficult to master so sigma very 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 high skill ceiling in terms of mechanics his cooldown usage is also very tricky he's one of the most uh, difficult like rock is a really big really important cooldown his shield usage a lot of important things here Ana, pretty self-explanatory like almost limitless skill ceiling with her um the only thing that keeps Ana back for me is the fact that her gun is pretty much straightforward um you know hitting your shots with Ana is is great but it's not even a crucial part of uh Ana at the top tiers in other words um you know jonak can kill genjis and that's great and all but like at the highest level you're not going to be shooting squishies is not always going to lead to a lot of kills it's helpful but it's not something that like it's not like oh you have to be playing at that level to perform farah okay this sort of is actually something i've changed my opinion of recently um the last couple of months farah is and, and i'm going to give full credit where credit is due yizna has really changed my opinion of farah because of the amount of different compositions and situations that he's managed to find value out of farah when he's literally being hard countered um has really opened my eyes and it's the fact that the number i didn't think it was possible to hit the number of direct hits that i see him land on heroes like mid-flight echo widow across the map like there is a level of mechanics that i did not give respect to far out of i just treated her like another spam hero um and the fact that she has such high mobility options makes it really really way like you could argue that she's maybe high challenge maybe she's not quite in this tier maybe she should be in this tier but like be the top end but i'm i'm on the fence of this one so uh doomfist i mean this one's self-explanatory there's literally hours and hours and hours hours of footage of just doomfist rollouts and there's hours of doomfist micro and macro and tricks and tips and little like like techs that come out you know and um then you have to go you're not even talking about matchups and positioning and like what your role is with doomfist and like so obviously not a really great hero right now uh, but there is just an endless amount of micro macro tips map specific stuff understanding this concept with doomfist is just unbelievable and he 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 believe absolutely belongs here um because it's just unbelievable the amount that you can min max out of a hero um you might not always get rewarded for it but there is a lot that you get out of it uh diva now this was in one was another unpopular i got some criticism for this one um the reason why diva is not up here is because i think diva diva's cooldown usage positioning uh decision making has the potential to be as like as difficult as ball winston's um it's not okay for example you want a diva who's better like divas gets punished more if her cooldown usage isn't good when compared to like ball but the theoretical ceiling for ball and diva are probably equally high in terms of like make matrix usage cooldown usage positioning things like that the difference between ball and diva and winston and diva and tracer and diva is they both all have really really important cooldown usages but i think diva's mechanics are easier i think her mechanics are easier which is might be a hot take i think diva's mechanics are easier than tracer i think diva's mechanics are easier than winston primal and i think diva mechanics are easier than ball like even if he had aim lock as diva you wouldn't like instantly like just become a god right i think diva is definitely it's more important to have good cooldown usage with diva than it is with other heroes but again we're not talking about like which hero is the most skillful to play at the high level it's the one that has the highest theoretical ceiling and i don't think diva ceiling is as high as some people would like to say it is um 
but she is obviously still remarkably difficult to play. Zenyana, this he's basically here just because of mechanics. Um, the reason he's not in challenging the master because other mechanical heroes like Ash would also you know would cry wolf is because Harmony, Discord, um, and and specifically Trance are actually really really important to use properly. And if you guys have seen even my GM pro semi pro Zenyatta reviews. Um, I've been, I'm actually surprised at the number of Zens that don't properly use cooldowns. Uh, not to mention the fact, uh, BBHC, thank you for the fall, not to mention that he's extremely punishable with positioning. So positioning with Zen is, is, is extremely difficult and it gets higher, harder the higher, higher you get on the rank. Um, because, you know, even if you have equally good mechanics as the enemy DPS, uh, the enemy DPS have way better kits of and murdering you the second you make a positional mistake. So Zen is certainly here. Um, Although there are some metas that are more forgiving for Zen that make him easier to play. So he's not always the hardest to play, but he is consistently one of the harder ones to play. Genji, um, to min-max Genji is, is in a way not quite as crazy as Doomfist, but there's just a lot of micro, a lot of macro, a, little, a lot of little tricks. A lot of things evolve when the Genji double shield meta was around. You guys remember that? The Ash Genji. Val, thank you so much for the sub, mate. There were a ton of little micro tricks. I remember coaching Genji then about wall climbing, slash, double jump, slash dash then slash and then you would dash through like there's a lot of little things that you do with genji and that's just the case with him as a hero he has a, a very no i was taken think of the fall there's a lot of little micro things that you can do with genji not to mention um mechanics with him are also very important as well not just uh, the blades which are obviously you know the, the crazy crazy fast blades uh but also the mechanics of his projectile very very important if you hit like if you're very accurate with your right click in short range you can literally one shot people at a crazy rate um, obviously the left click is is inconsistent but the right click is a really really close range right click is a huge part of his kit and it's important to get it done correctly thanks val i really appreciate it i appreciate it i don't have a lot of experience with casting i casted a little bit like several years ago but i appreciate it man i had a lot of fun you disagree with genji you think he's lower i mean that's fair you can disagree if you want I mean, I'm, this isn't fact. This is just my opinion. Widowmaker, um, positioning and cooldown usage with Widow is a thing. It's not complete. She's not all aim. She's definitely positioning. Game sense is really important to know when and where you can position depending on the situation. But obviously, you're talking about a hero that, like, if you have perfect aim uh, or significantly better aim than the enemy team, you're just going to blow everybody up. Like, she is such a mechanics heavy hero, and she still has relevant cooldown usage that it's hard not to justify putting her here. Like, I know a lot of people are like, oh, Widow, you just click heads, that's all you do, but number one, clicking heads is hard, and number two, that's not true. That's not all that she does. So, Lucio was very low on the previous one, but Lucio's ceiling is really high. Mechanically, decision-making-wise, um, and goats, like, there's a lot of things that Lucio had to be thinking about in terms of amp usage, positioning, when do I need to be peeling the boot, when do I boop them in, when do I boop them out. Uh, speed obviously is an entirely different animal and actually sound barrier is a tricky support ultimate to use to so know when to use it as well okay last tier and this one was hard because there's a lot of heroes i weren't sure about here ball is unquestionably in the top tier um again he's a pretty strong hero right now so he's not particularly hard to get value out of but you can go through a ball vod and just literally count dozens of errors that are made uh, like every every couple team fights, you know, uh, in terms of like target priority. Uh, obviously, he's a very mechanically reliant. There's just again, like Doomfist, an endless number of micro, macro, map specific, cool rollouts, cool little techs that you can do here and there. Um, he's aim reliant as well. Uh, obviously, his his role changes a lot depending on the enemy composition. Um, there's just a million things that you can do with Ball from a micro macro standpoint, and he's more, arguably more mechanically challenging than Doomfist as well. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind. Um, the other thing that makes Ball superior to Doomfist is there's a significant higher opportunity to play him into different comps. So you need to not, there's a lot more play styles with Ball, like engagement times and engagement ways. Um, Winston is the next one. Now, Winston is one of those heroes where mechanics are relatively light. Uh, I wouldn't say they're Moira light, but relatively light, like uh, without his ultimate. Um, but his positioning, cooldown usage, uh, decision making, maybe the hardest in the game. Um, probably the hardest in the game because you get punished, like maybe right up there with Genji um, and maybe D.Va, maybe. But remarkably difficult to get value properly out of their cooldowns. Um, like you go from feeding to absolutely caring. And then obviously he has the hardest ultimate in the game to use, uh, unquestionably. Pulse Bomb, Dragon Blade are in there uh, in terms of difficulty. Um, 
you could also make an argument that maybe like I'm trying to think what else would be a difficult ultimate to use. Um, you know, there aren't that many difficult ultimates to use. Maybe Bastion ultimate would be a little tricky, but like definitely, definitely the most difficult ultimate mechanically to use in the game. Um, uh, and then Tracer is, I mean, again, second most difficult ultimate in the game to use um, in terms of skill ceiling. Uh, and then you're talking about a hero who has ridiculous mechanical de demands, ridiculous positional and game sense demands, a play style that's constantly changing depending on the enemy situation, depending on the enemy team, uh, cooldowns, which are, I mean, they define her hero. Uh, you look at somebody like Doomfist who's defined by punch. Well, equally along that line, you have Tracer who's defined by blink. Without blink, you don't have a Tracer. Like, can you imagine playing Genji without dash or without deflect, right? But with Tracer, it's even worse. She literally can't do anything without Blink. So obviously everything around Tracer revolves around her cooldown usage and they are very mechanically difficult uh, cooldowns to use. And obviously she's a hero that can be infinitely obnoxious, do infinite amount of, like if you stick every, if you stick every, if you hit every pulse bomb, it's over. There is no counter to it. There is no counter to pulse bomb outside of, you know, Matrix, which you can counterplay that. There is no counter to pulse bomb. It will get you a free kill every single team fight. And that theoretical ceiling, whereas ultimates like, you know, Flux, you can, you can use cooldowns to counter very easily. You know, you can, you can, like, the only thing that really truly can consistently counter Pulse Bomb is what? Like, Zarya Bubble? Immortality Field? That's, that's maybe it. So. Deflect, but you get right. So the thing is, like, deflect, yeah, maybe Zari bubble deflect. There's not much I can deal with. It. And, and again, all of those are play aroundable by this, the, the, the tracer. What ends up happening is, can you can Zarya live without her bubbles? I mean, technically, I mean, no, she can't. She has to use her bubbles. And when she uses bubbles, there it gives tracer pulse bomb, right? You know, can, can, uh, you know, can I, can, uh, I think the only thing is, like I said, the, the lamp. And even then, it breaks the lamp, and then they're all still low HP. So it's not even a consistent then. So I think just think tracer has an unbelievably high. Uh, skill ceiling in terms of like what a perfect tracer can accomplish and I think we see that even now like the level of tracer that's improved from say the OB season one to now it's un it's unbelievable it's unbelievable um so okay what here do you consider to be the meeting of skill ceiling and skill floor I mean we can look right now I mean I, I I pulled it up let's look right now I think McCree I think McCree I think McCree is uh one that's definitely in there BAP is in there as well Arissa uh mccree bap orissa ash so heroes that are that have like either are a little tricky with cooldowns or a little tricky with mechanics generally tend to be in the middle um i think hanzo yeah hanzo's in there as well so yeah those are the median for me what heroes have the largest difference between ceiling floor not a lot of them but there are a couple of them i think ball was a big one so ball was way down here on moderate and then ball was all the way at the top um let's see here what else um symmetra went from is very easy uh, very tr like tricky to pick up but once you get her she's very easy and there's not a lot to her um reinhardt went from being very very easy to pick up to being moderate to ma like difficult to master um let's see here Let's see here. Oh, Farah as well. Very kind of strong because nobody knows how to aim and like mid tiers. And you can, at least again, I'm keeping console in mind here, but obviously very difficult to master. Uh, Diva as well, kind of just exists, but higher tiers, there's a lot more to her kit. Um, Lucio, Lucio's a big one too. Lucio, how many times, how many of you guys have seen those Lucios that just sit AFK and payload and with heal song and just shoot in the enemy's general direction? You know what I'm saying? Like that's the base value of Lucio is just amping heals are necessary, speeding occasionally, using beat as necessary, right? So like the baseline of Lucio, like that gold plat Lucio, is is a, there's a miles of difference between him and the uh, you know the top 500 one. So, but yeah. Then again, this is all subjective. This is my opinion, but I wanted to actually like take the time and I want to again to differentiate between skill floor and skill ceiling because it's disingenuous to say that Mercy is a very easy hero to play when at the you know the top tiers she's actually a pr relatively moderately difficult hero to play. 
right? Same thing with like, you know, oh, you know, uh, Symmetra, she's really tricky, man. Like she's so hard, like her TP and nobody knows how to play around it. And like, you know, her like right knowing when to right click, knowing the left click. Well, yeah, but when, once you get the hang of it, that's basically all there is to it, right? So it, go, it goes both ways. Same thing with the ball, which we said earlier. Ball isn't easy if the enemies know what they're doing. Well, that's the key right there, right? Like that's what we're talking about. Okay.